Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. For today's program, we turn to the sun. Solar arrays are popping up everywhere. In a moment, we'll learn how many acres of solar panels there are in the state and what that means for energy entrepreneurs and Vermont utilities. First, we begin with a story that harnesses not only the power of the sun, but some of the cutest landscapers on four legs. Here's Keith Silva. When a story includes newborn lambs, it's best to start there. Who doesn't like baby lambs? <laughs> These lambs, and their mamas, are growing up in a brave new world. This flock of 49 is grazing alongside and underneath solar panels at Apple Tree Point in Burlington. You're looking at about 11,000 panels and the solar field produces about two and a half megawatts. Two and a half megawatts is designed on this particular project to provide electricity for somewhere between seven and 800 homes. When Ed Von Turkovich's business, South 40 Solar LLC, built this array a couple of years ago, they learned fast what their number one job would be to maintain the property. One of the major jobs after you built a solar panel is making sure that you have a plan to control the vegetation. If you don't get a handle on it early, it takes a lot more effort to uh, clear underneath the panels and a lot more equipment, a lot more gasoline which is why this venture, why this experiment we're doing with the sheep is so uh, exciting. But then that also brings a little more balance into it. Ben Tutko runs sustainable solar grazing. He's a contract grazer, which means he rents sheep from a farmer and contracts with businesses to use the sheep as essentially a lawn mowing service. My business uh, prides itself on the fact that we have no uh, requirements above what a lawn mowing service would require. Uh, so we bring our own fence. We truck the water in to the site. We don't need water on site. It's full service, top to bottom. And then a really the good work Von Turkovich has contracted Tutko to do goes beyond the bottom line. So I think last year it was costing us a little over $5,000 to come in and mow twice and then bring an operator of a weed whacker in to come in and weed whack around the post. It doesn't, doesn't seem to make sense with solar that you would be actually bringing machines on to help do this work. Tutko is charging a couple hundred dollars less than what Von Turkovich paid to have the property mowed. And unlike the mowers, the sheep improve the look of the property in other ways. What the sheep are doing is not only cutting the grass, they're also fertilizing the grass, they're also aerating the soil with their hooves. Uh, they're putting more nutrients back into the soil than they're taking from it. In this local ecosystem, they're providing services not only for the solar field, but also for the neighbors next door, for the lake that's just a few hundred yards away. It's a win-win for us. A win -win. Hopefully it'll be a win for Ben, and it's certainly a win for the environment. I think the danger may be for us is that there may not be enough Bens around to do this once people hear about what a wonderful uh, operation he's got here. Tutko was working on farms in the area before he hit on this idea to work as a contract grazer. It's the first step towards the goal of owning his own farm and animals. To become a farmer, this really was the only path, in my eyes. The time was right to break out on my own, and when you don't have land and you don't own animals yourself, um, getting paid to graze, uh, not only providing a service to the solar companies, but also um, by caring for someone else's sheep seemed to be the only way to get into the, the business. To me, it looked nice and lush. As a beginning farmer with a dream, but without the land or animals to make it happen, Tutko turned to UVM Extension. You know, I find it so interesting. I feel like... One of the reasons that I discovered that Vermont is a great place to become a beginning farmer is all the resources that are available here in the state. Yes. I believe my first conversation with Kimberly involved me describing uh, what I hope to do and Kimberly remarking that she's been waiting for this to happen for years. As soon as I said I was ready to go, she was 10 steps ahead of me. UVM Extension has played an integral role of getting this business uh, off the ground and out into the field. There's so many different species of sedges. Kimberly Hagen is a grazing specialist with UVM's Center for Sustainable Agriculture. She's been trying to connect public and private landowners with shepherds on a project like this for some time. It's been at least a, a good five, six year effort. It's a new concept and like anything that's new, it's, you know, it takes a little while to get, for people to get familiar with it and comfortable. We have solar arrays here. They're here to stay. These are semi-permanent setups. 
and a lot of it is on prime ag land. So how do we make it work for ag? The quality of the grasses here wouldn't suit other grazers like cows. As for goats, they like to jump and they'll chew on anything, like wires. Sheep, on the other hand, have more discriminating tastes. The great thing about sheep is they like a mixed smorgasbord. <laughs> they love a tough salad, so to speak, you know? They're not fond of uniformity. They really like different things. And that's the wonderful thing about them is that they can eat things that, you know, like with cows, we have to think so much about, um, you know, having really high quality vegetation. But sheep, they can eat things that, you know, cows would turn their nose up at, and we can still get meat from them or milk or fiber. They'll go out and graze, and then they like to come in and hang out underneath the panels, which it keeps vegetation from growing under there, which is exactly what we want. A burgeoning ag business with environmental benefits, renewable energy, and baby animals. The sun certainly shines bright at Apple Tree Point. In Burlington, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. The Apple Tree Point site is one of three locations where Ben is using a total of 175 sheep to keep vegetation in check this summer. Joining me now are two guests. Alex DePillis is the Senior Agricultural Development Coordinator with the Vermont Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets. And Kimberly Hagen is with UVM Extension Centers for Sustainable Agriculture. Thank you both so much for being with us today. Yeah, it's great Hi. to be here. Yep. So, Alex, let's start by talking about how many solar arrays there are in Vermont and what that could mean for a grazing operation like Ben's. Yeah, it took a little while to find this data. I'm really glad to have the help of the Energy Action Network who tracks the progress in um, renewable energy in Vermont. And I uh, used their data off of their dashboard and found that there's about probably 350 of these ground mounted solar systems in Vermont of various sizes. Um, there's actually the most acres of all are in the fewest uh, systems. So there's about 40 systems that are in the 15 acre and up size. That accounts for maybe eight, 900 acres of these. Hmm. But there's also a lot of um, probably 150 or so uh, systems in the three to five acre range. and. Um, yeah, the system at uh, Apple Tree Point is more in that 15 acre size. Wow. So, you know, altogether, yeah, 300 some systems, you know, maybe 16, 1800 acres total uh, throughout the state sprinkled all over. Huh. And, and I'm guessing that when, when these sites were permitted, not much thought was given to grazing. What sort of permitting or zoning changes um, have to be considered when dealing with animals in this way? Well, the person who actually holds the energy siting permit should review their their official permit to see if there's any conditions placed. There's also side agreements that are incorporated in that permit called, well, it's a memorandum of understanding, for example, between the developer and the Agency of Natural Resources. Um, we from the Agency of Ag don't place any kinds of stipulations on this kind of usage. Um, the energy siting process in Vermont is statewide hmm. uh, and there's no structures on this land. So this is not a municipal, a matter of municipal zoning or of farm uh, rules. This is really a matter of the energy siting permit. And generally the energy siting permit is silent on this kind of thing. Okay. Well, and, and Kim Kimberly, uh, Ben is not the first farmer to use animals to graze solar arrays. Where else um, is this kind of work taking place? There's a lot of it actually in the West. Um, it's become quite common actually in California, Oregon, um, Minnesota, Kentucky has a lot of projects going. Um, you know, it's a combination of realizing that we need to keep um, fuel um, levels, you know, of um, dry material down so that um, it helps prevent forest fires, but also it's a great maintenance tool that doesn't um, we don't need to use fossil fuels, which is one of the current problems of the day, uh, too much um, exhaust from fossil fuels in the atmosphere. Sure, and, and what about the plants growing at these sites? Um, what does it take to plant grasses better suited to grazers or pollinators? You said this, this smorgasbord, this tossed salad for uh, sheep. Yeah, the problem um, we've all come to realize is that when post construction, um, you know, they want to put down seed that's going to grow quickly to get that soil covered and hang on to it. 
but can also deal with all the compaction. Unfortunately, those are plants that are not very palatable for grazing animals. So sheep can actually help with this um, by broadcasting a nice, nice mix of all kinds of clovers and orchard grass, um, rye grass, um, you know, just a nice mix of uh, plants. And we can put the, the sheep in there right after we broadcast seed and feed them hay and their hooves will work that seed into soil for good contact. And then we remove the sheep for a while and let those plants grow. And eventually that becomes great, um, you know, forage for grazing animals. We can also um, add other things that are, um, that keep pollinator species happy. There's a lot of um, folks in the beekeeping and uh, community that are very interested in seeing these areas become refugia for uh, pollinator friendly plants. Awesome. So we can do that too. Great. And quickly, Alex, you know, does the Agency of Agriculture have, have a role in, in getting more solar businesses to change over from mowing, which works just fine, but how about using animals as vegetation control? Yeah, they are starting to do it. And I was really glad to see that some of them, one of them anyhow, a big one, uh, Encore Renewables um, with their partner Greenbacker uh, has posted their sites and that on Landlink, which is a great resource because the solar company can post their site on Landlink and then the shepherd posts their interest of where they wanna graze and what they're looking for. And they can meet there on Landlink and uh, you know, uh, get the sheep on the sites that make sense for both of them. And that's what's been happening. So I've been really encouraging them to do that and to just explain this. I just came out with a guideline uh, or a checklist that is um, on our website now that explains what to think about when you're doing this. Uh, and, you know, for example, access to the site, uh, you know, right. how do you how do you communicate with each other? What if there's a problem? All of those kinds of things are now on Alex, this checklist. We're, we're all out of time and I'd like people to know that they can go to UVM's also, UVM Center for Sustainable Agriculture's grazing programs. If people are interested in becoming a contract, con a contract grazer, uh, you can check out this website, www.uvm.edu slash extension slash sustainable agriculture. So interesting, so wonderful. Thank you both for joining us today. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.